So Queen's Mindset, if this is your first time joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are super excited to have you here yet again as we continue this season seven. Listen to me. We have yet again another powerful woman in the room, and I cannot wait for you to hear her story. I'm super excited, and I know that she is pumped up and ready to share. And so before holding her back or anything like that. I'm just going to go right ahead and invite her in the room so that you can meet her as well. Welcome, welcome, Michelle. How are you? I am doing well. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, awesome. You are most welcome and you look lovely as well. So thank you for being here. Thank you very much. I am looking forward to this discussion. Awesome. Awesome. And so Michelle, I know they're watching right now and they're thinking to themselves, you know, okay, hold on. Who is she? <laughs> and where is she from? What does she do? And so before we get started about your story, I want you to tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Okay. Well, I'll start with the fact that I'm Jamaican Canadian. So somewhere in this conversation, people will hear a mixture of a Caribbean accent and a North American influence. Um, that's because I was born and raised in St. Catherine, Jamaica, but I moved to Canada 16 years ago. Um, today, people know me as an award-winning leader, a career coach, a speaker, an author, um, but not many people know the journey from confused professional to underemployed immigrant to award-winning leader today, and the journey that um, has taken me here outside of um, the professional pursuits. I'm also a wife, I'm also a mother. So add that to the equation and that kind of gives you a picture of, of what, what my life is like. Wow. I like how you said it, like it's just a little bit of something, but that's a lot of stuff. You know, you do so many stuff and you know, where do you find the time to do all that stuff? Yeah, and that's, that's a question I ask myself daily because um, some days it's a lot, but I try to be realistic about what I can manage in even, any given day. Sometimes it might mean just reprioritizing. I'm at the point now where I'm okay to take some things back off the agenda um, so that there's breathing room to, to be my best and still take care of my family as well. I love that. I absolutely love that. And so, Michelle, you have a story. And like I said, they're sitting on the edge of their seats because they want to hear your story and they want to hear where it all began for you. And so I want you to start from the beginning. Tell us where it began for you. Well, um, as I mentioned earlier, my journey began growing up in Jamaica. Um, I grew up in a home that had one parent that was a Christian and one that was not. Um, I was blessed to have gone to one of the one of the best high schools in Jamaica, I dare say, um, which helped from an educational perspective. But just like um, many persons growing up in the Caribbean, that we start out with humble beginnings. And by God's grace, we go through the stages of life. So after high school, I went to university in Jamaica shortly after I started my teaching career there. Uh, my family migrated to Canada, and then the Lord just kind of took me on a journey from there because I knew there was more that he wanted me to be doing. I wasn't sure what that more looked like, but eventually um, a pivotal period that summer after I'd left Jamaica and, and arrived in Canada resulted in my realizing through some prayers, some reflections, 
and just some other activities that pointed me in the direction of still stay in learning, but to be working with adults. And from there, I can see just how um, the gift that God gave me to be an educator and an encourager has really followed me through different stages of life and different parts of my career journey as well. Beautiful, beautiful. I absolutely love it. You know, and I love how you said uh, uh, throughout your career and your journey. And you know, when we hear that word journey, that can mean so many things for so many people at, at such a different time. And so let's unpick a bit about your journey. Because you said you came up in a home where one parent actually, you know, was living in God and the other parent was not as yet. How was that for you? Talk, talk to us a little bit about that. Well, it, it's interesting because the well, the parent who was a Christian had the, the greater influence and more time was spent with my mom, really, who was the, the Christian. And it also meant that I was at church a lot. <laughs> and so um, although I didn't fully surrender my life to Christ until I was 15, um, but growing up from I was young, it was always clear that that God was a part of our life and that we lived a life that went according to the Christian faith. And to be honest, a lot of the skills that I developed um, during my teens and young adulthood, I really learned them in church. So a lot of the leadership skills that I'm using today, um, learning to teach really from teaching VBS some of the Sundays. So a lot of the skills I'm using today, I actually learned them growing up in church in Jamaica. Beautiful, beautiful, I beautiful. I love that you're able to, you know, you're able to say that you've learned such skills from church because many times when people hear, especially those persons who are new to, you know, coming into the fold, you know, and they don't understand, they're like, oh, I don't know about that because everything on the outside seems or it looks a lot prettier, you know, it looks more attractive to them. And so they can't see that. And so I'm glad to hear that you were able to, you know, create or to be able to gain those skills from there. And so now you've grown up, you know, at the age of 15, you said you, you found God, you started to work in there. And then tell us a little bit more now about how things begin to unfold that to get you to the place of where you are today. Yeah. So while I was um, in Jamaica, I was very active um, in different levels of leadership in our youth department, um, active in a lot of other ways. I was also involved in my community where I was living in, in Port Mar St. Catherine, just a little bit outside of Kingston. But I, I knew that um, there's a lot that I wanted to accomplish in life, but knowing that it really means being led in whatever direction that God would point me um, to go. We know growing up in the Caribbean, if you finish high school, you gotta go to university. And in Jamaica, um, UWI, which is where I went, was would, where most people would go. It so happened that my church is very close to the university campus as well. So pretty much a good part of my young adult life was spent in a particular geography because if I was not um, at classes, I was at church. But shortly after I um, finished university, I was teaching in the high school system in Jamaica. And just um, for about four and a half years, I was there teaching um, at the high school level, which really put me in a position to be impacting young lives a lot. And today I can see when I see how some of those students have become just meaningful adults in their life, I could see um, the impact of using the whatever sphere of influence that God had put me to make a difference. And that's the same mindset I use today, even after moving to Canada 16 years now, that's still the mindset of wanting to make a difference, wanting to impact lives in my community and in the corporate workspace, which is where I mostly um, operate um, professionally. And that's the mindset for the most part. It's I'm there to impact, I'm there to be a positive influence. I'm there to make a difference in the lives of as many people as I can. And it doesn't need to look preachy if you understand um, what I mean that the way we operate and when we operate in excellence, 
then it will translate and others will see the the light of the Lord through how we operate and how we represent him well as ambassadors in whatever um, sphere that he he puts us to have an influence. Awesome, beautiful, beautiful. And so, and through that journey, because you touched on something there that is, you know, it's like one of my major things. So that's the mindset, because you talked about having that correct mindset. And so, in your career and your journey, as you are you are building, you know, what are one of the main things that you think really blocks or stops persons from having the right mindset that is necessary for them to be able to accomplish or overcome? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. And um, really, it's so important, especially in this kind of time where we're seeing a lot of challenges that people are navigating in, in their work life as well. Sometimes it is not being bold or not being audacious enough to take some steps. Um, uh, some people might just say it's, it's flat out fear of embracing the unknown, embracing the uncomfortable, embracing challenging seasons and what lessons they might bring us. And so sometimes it's just a lack of boldness. Sometimes it's just a right fear of, of whatever life might throw at you. Wow. I like that you said that. It's what life may throw at you. And so many times for those persons who may be watching right now, you're watching and you're probably, you know, you're hearing it for your first time or you've heard it before. And this, you might be an individual right now that is struggling with the right mindset. Because you know that you've been called for more, you've been called for greater, but some way, somehow, it's like life, you know, that the young people say, uh, life just keeps lifing, you know, mm -hmm. it just keeps happening, and it keeps blocking you, and so you can see that there's a particular way or a particular thing that you want to be able to accomplish, but you just don't know how. You know, Michelle, how would you help that person to be able to get there, especially if that person is someone who is more career-oriented, you know, so they want to do well in their career, or maybe they're entrepreneurs and they want to be able to build and to expand, but there's just a link. There's just something that's missing. How would you help them? Yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic question. And um, I would say based on the lessons that I've learned throughout my journey so far and um, the journey of several persons that I've helped along their journey, it really, I would say, come down to about four things. Um, which are, if you want to call them the four C's, it's getting clarity, how you're using your communication, it's nurturing a sense of community, and just be change ready. Clarity in the sense of sometimes when you're at a pivotal point, and for me, some of those pivotal points came through seasons of unemployment and seasons of underemployment and needing to reflect, do some assessment, do some prayer to gain clarity both about the direction to go as well as the strengths that I already have because sometimes we struggle to have the impact that we want because we don't recognize that each of us was gifted with strengths and attributes that make us suited for whatever that path is that God wants us to be on. Um, Career-wise and business-wise and life in general, I would say, and also how we're communicating. I tend to encourage folks to focus on influence and persuasion. How is it that you're putting yourself out there, including the brand that you're setting up for yourself? Because how you show up matters and how you show up is communicating something to the people around you. But of course, we're people and we can't exist in a vacuum. Um, in the Caribbean, we would say no man is an island. So, or no one is an island. And so we need that community. For me, I know that when I had seasons of adversity, difficulties, I needed my community. I needed my family. I needed my mentors. I needed my coaches. I needed my prior partners. I have a group of persons that when life is life thing, as we would say, and when all the career ups and downs are happening, I have a group of folks where um, we can pray about situations and seek divine guidance and intervention where needed as well. 
And then, of course, we have to be ready for change because when stuff are happening, when the economy is changing, when there are restructures, and there's a lot of that happening right now in the in the post-pandemic um, period that we're in. And so we just have to know that the only thing that doesn't change is God and, and, and his word. So everything else could possibly change. And so we always have to keep that mindset to be change ready because life happens and we have to adjust as we need to for sure. So that's more or less my recipe for, um, for what to do. And I love that three C's. I hope you guys are taking notes. They are coming up on the screen. So I really hope you got an opportunity to capture them. You know, if you miss it, don't worry. At the end of this, you're going to be able to come back again so that you can replay as many times as possible and take your notes so that you're able to get the clarity that is needed. But just to go over for you, she mentioned three C's and that's clarity, community, and change. And I love that. I love the way you broke it down too as well because I can see how that can really help the individual who's stuck in that mindset, who was stuck with trying to figure out, okay, what should I do? Where should I go? How should I make this work? How can this work for me? And, you know, many times that happens. And so I'm very, very happy in terms of what you share. And so I have to ask this other question as you share that with us there outside of now. So now they've implemented these C's and they're able to begin to navigate, they get the clarity, they have the community and they understand change and they're able to apply and adapt, you know, and actually build out. How successful has these three C's been for you in your career? They, they've made a big difference, I would say. I certainly wish I was keen on them at the very beginning. This is now after a couple of years of realizing what works and what doesn't work and extracting um, a couple of lessons from there. But I'm thinking of maybe about five years ago, one of the things that um, I wanted to do was to be in a role where I had more influence um, around decisions, not just in my workplace, but in other organizations across the country. And through um, this, that sense of clarity about where those opportunities might be, um, how I communicate that I already have the transferable skills and those innate gifts that God had already given me, and then relying on my community. So I got a mentor at that time who had already been on that journey that I wanted to be on. And that helped me a lot because the way she's already experienced it, allowed her to give me some insights about kind of which direction to go with it. And that landed me in a consulting firm that was giving advice to all kinds of organizations, universities, um, government agencies, et cetera. And so the, 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 the C's did help me. It took a while, but eventually, the lessons learned and I apply those even today to help other persons as well on their journey and just to be ready for change as um, life provides more opportunities. I think that's so beautiful. That's awesome. That is awesome. And so I always like to talk about where you came from. And I know we mentioned a bit of that already, where you talked about coming to the household you came up in and, you know, where you grew up before you were able to transition, you know, to where you are now. But was there anything specifically that occurred, uh, you know, within your childhood that because of that occurrence, it has caused you to become the person that you are today? Wow, that, that question is loaded. <laughs> that question is fully that's um, fully loaded. I would say um, a part of that was that period when I had first um, given my life to Christ at 15. Um, one of the things was that you can imagine as a teenager, there are lots of influences in a lot of directions. Even if you grew up in a Christian home, there's still going to be lots of social um, influences. But what had helped me to keep grounded and um, help me to keep sharp. If we think of where it says in the Bible that iron sharpens iron, I had joined the ISCF or the Interschools Christian Fellowship at my high school. And that made a big difference because I could uh, say, I could learn from 
people my own age, some of whom were Christians long before I became one, and together we could sharpen each other. We would impact our school because it was the kind of club that our extracurricular activity that had us being more outreach focused even more so. So that was very pivotal for me because it helped me to stay grounded in my faith, but also begin to sow those seeds of seeing impact, balance with excellence because um, it was one of the top schools in Jamaica as well, and you have to do well. And of course, if you want to influence um, persons for Christ, you have to also demonstrate his excellence so that other people will see that light as well and then want to know more about him. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. That's beautiful. I love that. I love that because I like what you shared about having you know, that foundation at school, like you said, within your age range, so that you understood that this is not just something that mommy can do only or that adults are able to do, you know, and it's important, even as we have grown now, we've become adults, it's important that whatever you're pursuing, whether it's in your career or it's in your in on business or entrepreneurship, whatever it is that you are passionate about, that you're always looking for like-minded people, persons who have been there already, who are doing it and who are flourishing in that field so that you're able to have that level of guidance and like you said a sense of community so that you have someone to lean on when things aren't going you know what the way that you would have wanted them to go and so as you continue to journey throughout your career and you've done some amazing things you've talked about being an award-winning author tell us a little bit about that okay so the the, the, the irony of the whole best-selling author, award-winning author, was that I didn't set out to write a book, but it just turns out that I was too impatient to make an online course, and so the content became a book, but clearly that was a redirection that the book would have an impact. It's called Changing Career Directions, Seven Steps to Transition to a New Career Path, and it's really for persons who want to get unstuck on their career journey. When we think about the challenges of career based on the themes that we're, we're trying to bring out, that some persons are not at the level that they wanna be. Um, some persons are feeling that desire to change to something else. Um, I've been helping some folks recently who really are aspiring to promotions, but it was not happening. And so the book essentially seeks to walk persons through that journey from uncertainty or discomfort to get some clarity, um, interestingly enough, how to communicate their brand, um, build community as well, and be ready for change, but walking them through step-by-step step some, some um, strategies that they can try to get unstuck um, from where they are in their career journey. Amazing. And so where can, if someone is watching right now and they're interested, they're like, hold up, I need that. Tell them where they can get a copy of that book. So they could get copies from Amazon and also it's on Barnes and Noble's website, as well as Indigo's website for the folks who are in Canada. But um, most of the online bookstores carry it either as an ebook or you can purchase a physical copy. Amazing, amazing. And is that the only book you have or do you have two books? Is it more than one you have? Well, there's one published, which was the Seven Steps book, but mm -hmm. coming in a few weeks is Finding a Thriving Career in Canada, Strategies mm. and Stories to Equip Immigrants to Succeed. And wow. also that one is born out of not just my journey, but approximately 200 other people whose journey I've been involved in in some way. What have we learned and what have I learned that can help other people who maybe have recently arrived in Canada or if they're contemplating Canada as, I guess, the next stop on their life journey, that they can get some insights about how things work. Let's say it's a lot of lessons I wish I knew when I just got here 16 years ago, but to impact the next set of professionals who might end up here or were considering it. Lots of great insights about how to navigate 
careers and employment spaces here. Everything from networking to what happens if your education is not being recognized to that whole question of, do I need to settle for less because I'm an immigrant? And lots of other questions that are usually on people's minds just before they arrive or just after they arrive as well. Amazing. And so if you can, because I'm sure that right now some persons are watching and I know a lot of our viewers, they're they are in so many different places. Some of them are actually in places, in a place right now where they're getting ready themselves to transition. And so if you can give us like a summary, just a quick, so nothing too much because we still want to give them enough to purchase the book, but just yeah. enough, just a summary that they can you know, get a little bit more in terms of, and you can probably touch on the area of employment or finding opportunities or networking or anything around that area in terms of the book, what they can expect from it. Yeah, and I appreciate the opportunity to share about that as well. If we think about the fact that the, the, the whole thing of a career is really a journey and that's how it's described on the back of the book, it is a journey, but when you've left your comfort zone to go somewhere else, that journey is full of both high aspirations, but also some concerns or discomfort. Um, we were talking earlier about mindset and how that comes in. A lot of persons become not just uncomfortable, but some persons lose their confidence in those early days because of maybe the job search is not going how they want it. So there's some resources in there for that as well. In addition to the usual things one would expect in a career book in terms of here is how you do this, here is how you do that. Um, here are some of the social situations to handle when you're networking. So it's very, very practical. And that was the, the aim really, that it gives you a real sense on the ground how some things happen um, when people just migrate, a lot of things are different. It's not that it's better or worse. It's just very unfamiliar. And so this takes the mystery out of a lot of the, the usual career questions, plus some resources to help with mindset, because it can be tough. It can be tough. And some people do get battered and bruised in those early days because of the aspects that are most difficult to get settled, not just career-wise, but life in general when you're trying to create roots in a new environment and so it's a full toolkit of both strategies and stories because for some people they get inspiration from knowing that somebody else went down the path that they went down whatever uniqueness they think um characterizes their journey but somebody else probably experienced the same thing and so that was something I learned in a program that I was facilitating a few years ago that just sharing stories from other people had helped um, folks a lot with that optimism when things seem pretty dark, that optimism that, yes, I can really do this. Other persons have gone down this road and they came up better on the other side. And so there's also the emphasis on stories and not just strategies to, to balance the equation out for folks. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I absolutely love it. I hope you guys are already taking notes because this is some really great information. So if you are looking to transition over to Canada and you're wondering, how can I do this? Or you maybe you're already there and you're thinking to yourself, okay, I am struggling right now. I don't know who to turn to, how to get things off the ground. I'm feeling a bit stuck and I'm honestly thinking about giving up on my dream. I want to go right ahead and reach out to Michelle, take this opportunity so that you can reach out to Michelle. We're going to have her information coming up on the screen for you so that you know exactly how you can reach her. If you're looking to, you know, you can just reach out to her on all social media platforms. You're going to see it on the screen right now. It's coming up at MG uh, at m gibson morgan and that's on facebook that's on instagram and it's also on linkedin as well and so i want you to go right ahead just reach out and tell hey michelle i saw you on the show and ask her a question i'm sure she's going to be excited and happy to assist you as well and then if you want to check out her website you can do that too as well on the screen feel free just hit the pause button 
pause button if you can, or you can make a screenshot so that you can get that email, get that website uh, address. And also her email address is right on the screen too as well. And you can send her an email so you can learn more. This is important information because I know we're in a season right now where a lot of things are shifting and changing. And so you don't want to miss an opportunity. I think this is an awesome opportunity for you to grab hold of so that you can get the information that you need to make the decisions that you need to make. Okay. So let's get back into it, Michelle, because we're having such a great time here. And as you're sharing, you know, about your story, as you've been walking it out, and you know, you're living, walking testimony of everything that you've been able to accomplish. And so if you had to look back over all the things that you've been able to accomplish over the years uh, that you've been doing this, would you, what would you say was your hardest or tough, tough th toughest challenge that you had to overcome? Well, I guess the question is how much time do we have to answer that question? <laughs> yeah, um, because there, there, there are highs and lows, just like anything else. Mm -hmm. um, there are just different things. I referred earlier to um, underemployment and unemployment. There was also um, challenges with health. I remember. Uh, maybe one of the toughest situations was for a whole week, I was having headaches and unexplained headaches. And I went to the hospital from the Tuesday, I was there all week, and they couldn't figure out what the problem was. And it was just getting more intense. And eventually, I prayed on the like the Thursday evening or the Friday morning, just when the week had gone, no updates, or doing lots of tests and no answers. And I just said, God, either please heal me or just show them what's the what's the problem because this can't this can't continue. And by the Friday night, the the headaches stopped after a whole week of headaches. And then the hospital discharged me. They still hadn't figured out what the problem was, but the problem had gone away after I prayed in the morning. And by the evening. When I'd gone home already, then somebody calls me, um, another doctor who wasn't on shift in the day came in and was looking over the records and apparently did figure out what the issue was, but that was kind of after I'd already prayed and asked God, just please help me deal with this because I'm not getting anywhere um, and this just can't continue. But that was really one amazing story of just the power of prayer and the fact that um, whatever life throws at me, whether it's a career issue or a health issue, that I can rely on my faith. I can rely on my family members and also that spirit of resilience that um, that I've had over the years. Um, that's just one story. There, there's so many, so many others. Um, I'm thinking of the people who might be watching that are going through just problems at work. I uh, know there's a lot of discussions right now about persons being laid off because of these structures. Just know that you're not alone in that journey. I've walked that journey more than once, but you will come through on the other side of it. And so just to share a, a word of hope and optimism to those folks where the job situation um, is not ideal right now, whether it's because of what's just what's happening in the economy or something unique to your employment situation at your job, just know that God does want us to thrive in our careers and he does want us to thrive at work and he will make a way. I know that there are seasons where I can honestly say it was just prayer and favor that turn around certain situations that seem um, difficult um, at different points, but with the help and guidance also of your support system. And we talked earlier about the four C's that would help you as well, that you will make it through and you will come out better for it. I am a testimony that you can go from uncertain professional to underemployed immigrant to award-winning leader or whatever your other aspirations. Um, will be just a matter of time that that God will take you there. Amazing. 
absolutely amazing. I really hope you guys are taking notes here because I'm really enjoying it. And I know we're coming close to the end. We're almost there, but we're not there yet. And you just shared some tough times that you had and you know how God showed up with the power of prayer you've been able to overcome. And just looking back at some of the things that you would have encountered as a woman of God, you know, with your faith grounded in him, at any point, did you feel like giving up? Did you feel like just, you know, this is not for me anymore. I just, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, I I, I have. And usually it's in those seasons where um, some kind of unplanned change um, occurred. Certainly when I experienced a layoff for the first time, that was pretty, pretty difficult. That was not an experience I've ever had before. Um, didn't know what to do with it. And even when the job search was taking longer than expected, it did prove to be stressful. It did prove to be stressful. So being authentic that it wasn't all perfect. It's it there's a lot that's wonderful today, but that journey wasn't wasn't always like this. And so there were seasons, and definitely that first time when I experienced a restructuring that resulted in a layoff was certainly one of the most challenging. Wow, wow, wow. And I'm sure that someone who is watching right now, you're able to relate, you can connect because we have seasons and we go through multiple seasons, you know, in one year. <laughs> it's not sometimes you get a chance to say, okay, it's only in this year that I'm experiencing this particular season, but you can have multiple seasons in that year because seasons don't necessarily go by the year. And so and wherever you are tonight, I want to encourage you based on what Michelle is sharing right now is that you're going to come through and you have the ability to overcome. I love that she spoke on the power of prayer. So whatever it is that it may be a challenge for you right now, whatever you're facing right now and wherever you're at, apply some prayer because prayer answers all things. You know, that's what the word tells us to pray without ceasing, you know, so don't stop praying. Just keep praying. Whatever the situation is, keep praying because listen, God is hearing and he is responding. Even if you don't see it happening, she said she was in a hospital for a complete week. She had that headache just going on, going on. But from the time she opened her mouth, something happened and something changed and that must be a testimony and encouragement for someone who's watching here maybe you're not opening your mouth maybe you need to open your mouth and say and call on him and see some things begin to change and so michelle just before we go um i want you to share some words of encouragement to that woman right now who may be watching us and and she may be thinking you know I, I don't know, Michelle, I understand what you're saying, but I'm still struggling, you know, and I'm trying to figure out how to overcome. Life is really throwing some curve balls at me in terms of her wanting to build that career or wanting to build that business. And I want you to encourage her. Yeah. And, um, you know, I appreciate the opportunity to just speak life into somebody this evening, because that's, that's what really what I'm sensing that the, the difficulty that you're experiencing today, it won't last all the time. One of my favorite um, scriptures in the Bible when things get really tough is in Exodus where it says that you should stand still and see the salvation of the Lord and that the, the difficulties in, this, in, in that case, we're talking about the Egyptians, but whatever that thing that seems to be militating against you right now and for some of us it really is militating you could feel like it's a real fight that the season that you're in but know that you see them today but soon you will see them no more i also like in jeremiah one where where it talks about god making us a fortified city you're not gonna go under as hard as it is right now he is fortifying you for the challenge that you're facing. And just know that not only will he fortify you, but you're going to come out better on the other side, giving him thanks on the other side. After all, he says, soon you will see them no more. And so I encourage you to stand your ground in your faith and just know that when we pray for answers, God will, God will definitely give it to us. He will give us the direction that we need to face the challenge. And then add to that, though, is that we must take action. 
So when you get an idea or something happens that prompts you to take a particular step, we know that our faith needs to be accompanied by works. So we need to do something. And so not just to pray, but to listen and then to act. And you will be fortified in the meantime and come out better on the other side of it. Powerful, powerful, powerful. I really hope you guys are taking notes because I love what she said. You will come out on the other side of it. And many times we can't see the other side, but just know you will come out on the other side of it. And so Michelle, what is new for you? You know, what do you have coming up? Anything that you want to share with them that they can tune into, you know, that they can be a part of? I want to allow you this opportunity to just go ahead and share. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to, to talk about what I've been up to. Well, certainly the book that's coming out soon, Finding a Thriving Career in Canada, Strategies and Stories to Equip Immigrants to Succeed, is one of the things that's high on my radar as the weeks draw near. But also, I want to, to collaborate more, to impact more professionals, especially the mid-career professionals, who are looking to get to the next level with their aspirations. And so I'm actively focused on how can I build up some mid-career mid professionals who have some aspirations to, to go to higher levels, to get into leadership, and how I might support them through coaching, um, consulting, and our mentorship so that together we can help you to achieve your goals and get to your next level. Amazing, amazing. And if you're wondering, how do I contact her? Just look on the screen. Her email address is right there. You just heard who she says she's looking for. And if that individual is you, go right ahead and send her that email to right now. Don't hesitate. Send it off so that you are able to be a part of what she has going on on listen michelle this has been a phenomenal experience i really did enjoy you know sharing with you and hearing from you as you shared your testimony here powerful testimony and words of encouragement to help build and really expand you know these women of god who are tuning in to us tonight and so i just want to say thank you for being so open and thank you for being you know transparent and able to share with us thank you so much and thank you very much for having me as well. I appreciate the opportunity to share with you and to share with your audience as well. Yes, you are most welcome. And so just before we go, is there any lasting words? I know you already gave them the word of encouragement, but maybe um, something that I probably didn't get to ask you, but you're thinking, oh, I should have said that. Is there any last words you'd like to share with them before we go? It's just a reminder to everyone that you can thrive. It's not a matter of um, faith being different from your career. The two are linked and you are made to thrive. You are made to have an impact. If you're feeling stuck right now, there are ways to get unstuck. And so let's have a discussion about what may be preventing you from um, achieving your leadership aspirations or making some shifts that you want to make in your career that um, I have a full toolkit. The prayer is definitely in there. The word is definitely in that toolkit, but there are some other career development um, resources in that toolkit as well. It's the whole deal. And just know that you can thrive, not just survive on your career journey. Awesome, 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 amazing. And so once again, thank you, Michelle. To those of you who are watching us here tonight, thank you so much for tuning in. This is season seven and we have been having a blast. We are, listen, we are going ahead pretty swiftly because these episodes just keep coming and they just keep getting better. So I just really want to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you didn't get an opportunity to share this link, then what are you waiting for? Go right ahead and share this link with a friend and make sure you get them in the 
room. We have, it has been a pleasure having you here. Make sure your comments are below. We're going to be checking the comment section just to see what you have to say and also to be able to respond to as well. And so thank you so much once again for tuning in and we'll see you back here next Wednesday, same time, but with a different powerful, powerful woman who was also going to share her story. So thank you for tuning in tonight. Goodbye.